Yo, yo, what's up everyone? This video is actually gonna be extremely important to understanding JavaScript. We're gonna be talking about global variables and how those work. This is really important to understand if you're gonna make scalable JavaScript applications. And it's actually a really common mistake for beginners. It's something that's definitely tripped me up as I was learning, but now I got it down pretty good. So hopefully you can pick up my understanding just by diffusion of watching this video. <laughs> but I definitely recommend that you get some practice in by typing out the things I type in this video. By the way, one of the best ways to get practice of this stuff is to go through a coding bootcamp. In Dev Mountain, our generous sponsor has a web development bootcamp that'll help you go from ground zero to professional web developer. This is definitely what you're going to want to do if you want to take these JavaScript concepts and apply them to real world problems and get a job in the industry. So go to one of their boot camps. Their housing is at no additional cost. And if you mention that I sent you there, they'll give you 250 bucks off. Just, just make sure you, you mention my name. Maybe one of these boot camps are even in your city. Go check out the Dev Mountain website and see what they have to offer. If there's nothing offered in your city and going in person is just not a possibility right now, they also have stuff online. So you can go through online classes and web development, iOS, and more. Definitely check them out. I'd highly recommend it. So we're gonna be working in the console in this video. And whenever we need to clear it, you can press this little stop button. And you can zoom in by either holding control plus or command plus if you're on Mac or out using the minus sign. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this console as like a dynamic application experiment tester thingy, <laughs> a REPL basically. So I mentioned this in an earlier video, a read eval print loop. Basically we can tell JavaScript we want to do something. It's going to evaluate it. It's going to print out the result. Then it's just going to keep looping and letting us work with this dynamically. So for example, we can create a variable age and set that equal to five. Don't worry about this undefined. It's going to print undefined when there's no return value. So for example, if I do something like prompt, whoops, I got a little typo. Plus this is way too big, I'm zooming out. <laughs> so if I do prompt and I type in a value, you can see the return value is Caleb. Assigning to a variable doesn't return anything, so it's just gonna say undefined. You'll notice when we create variables, we use this var keyword, and this is going to become very important later on. So right now, we can create a variable without that var keyword. So for example, here's how many dogs I have. That works fine. It doesn't make a difference whether we use that var or no var right now, because in the context we're in, it's going to do the same thing. But later on, once we start working inside of functions, this is going to be a very serious thing and you definitely want to understand what's going on here. So when we create a variable, that variable gets attached to something called the window object. So I can say window and you can see one of the things in here is our variable age we created. You can also scroll down and find dogs, 30. So this window variable is also known as the global scope. This can be accessed anywhere in our code. Everything we use that's important to us is going to be attached to this window object. But we're not always going to want to use this window object. The reason we don't want to do that is because anytime we create a variable such as dogs or age and we attach it to that window object, well, since everything has access to this window object, different files or different parts of our JavaScript file can conflict with our variables and basically overwrite the content of our variables. So these naming conflicts are a very serious issue. So we don't wanna make any variables inside of the global scope. So how do we avoid the global scope? Well, we actually have to put our code inside of a function. And then when we create a variable, it's in a new scope and it's not gonna be on this window object. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now. And we are gonna get into more depth on how to create functions and how they work later on. This is kind of like one of those foundational things that you gotta do and it's important to understand, but you don't necessarily have to understand all of the details. So I'm just gonna delete everything here. And the way we create a function is we use the function keyword and then put parentheses. The next thing we do is we put curly braces and then we put all of our code inside of these curly braces. After the curly braces, <laughs> we put another set of parentheses and then a semicolon. So yeah, talk about some syntax for real. But guess what, we're not even done yet. The other thing we need to do is we need to wrap, <laughs> this is crazy, the function all the way past the curly braces with parentheses. This is the structure to make something known as an iffy which stands for immediately invoked function exp 
expression. Once again, don't freak out if you don't understand all this. Most important thing you need to know is that if you put your code inside of this function, you should be safe. So in here, I could say var age equals five. When I come over to our browser and refresh and try to access age, it's like, what, what is age? I can't find age. The reason that's happening is because this function's executing and then it's done and then age goes out of scope and it's no longer accessible. What that means is there's not gonna be any conflicts with our naming. So when we go into the window object, there's not gonna be anything in here called age. Age is only going to exist inside of this function. So if we basically put everything inside of this function, it's gonna work exactly the same way, but we're also going to protect our variables. But this is where that var keyword comes in, because if we forget to put this var, it's going to basically look inside of this function and see that, oh, age was never defined. So then it goes up one scope and looks there. And we're only one scope deep. <laughs> we could have nested scope. So what that means is it's basically gonna go up the scope chain and not find age anywhere. So it's just going to define it automatically on the window object. So now if I do a refresh, and I say age, well, hey, it exists and it says it's five. So basically we defeat the whole purpose of doing this iffy because then we're assigning our variables on the window object. We're making them global. What are we doing? So you definitely wanna make sure you put that var keyword in. This is really closely tied to functions and variable scope. We're gonna get into all of that in this series, but for now, know that once you're building serious applications, you're going to want to encapsulate all your code within a function. I might not use this iffy throughout the entire series because I really like being able to test our variables over here. It's really just important if we're worried about our variable scope and global variables. So key takeaways, when you don't use the var keyword, age is created as a property of the window object, which is global. So when declaring variables, make sure you put the var keyword if you don't want it to be global. That's all I got for you guys. Hopefully that was helpful. Once again, please consider subscribing and please check out the links in the description if you want some uh, extra goodies. <laughs> Thanks guys. Peace out.